Our last guest was in shock. I was certainly surprised. Good morning to you. At this retaliatory move, they've unleashed the yuan. They really have. They set the lowest reading since December. They've let that off the leash. And they've gone slap back at you in terms of we're not buying any more agricultural products. S put a scale on this. If I was to ask you the scale of the response from the Chinese on a scale of not to 10, and 10 being perhaps the most aggressive, how would you rate the response? I'll probably put a 7 to that. And I would caveat it by saying that uh, even though the magnitude is uh, somewhat uh, surprising, the direction of travel uh, is not. Specifically, if you look at the uh, uh, renminbi, uh, if you think about the additional tariffs uh, on Chinese uh, exports, that would anyway assert uh, depreciation pressure on the currency. And if you think about kind of uh, the two sides of the negotiation, maybe the Chinese right now feel that there is less need for them to kind of uh, support the currency as part of the negotiation uh, process given the uh, uh, news last week and, and, and as a result of that perhaps leading to uh, weaker currency. So the so direction of travel not surprising but the magnitude, uh, yes. Yeah, it's interesting you brought up the magnitude because earlier we were talking about the fact uh, that the PBOC might not be targeting a specific level but perhaps more concerned about controlling volatility. Uh, they've already said they've advised firms not to seek profit speculating on the yuan, saying the PBOC that it's ready to crack down on short-term speculation to keep the currency basically stable. So how long do you expect this situation with big risk-off in markets in reaction to the yuan to continue, Whaley, for the rest of this week or could we find stability, say, by Wednesday? day. I think it is somewhat inconvenient that we're in the middle of summer and given lighter liquidity generally in markets during this period of time, volatility can be exacerbated and perhaps even uh, persist, which is why we uh, continue to reiterate our uh, uh, focus on building portfolio resilience, especially for situations like this. So specifically, we're looking at gold, we're looking at the US government bonds, European government bonds, as well as inflation-linked bonds, because we think that break-even is too pessimistic. Okay, so the break-evens are a little bit too pessimistic. And in the last hour, we had a conversation with Martin Malone, and he said, look, one of the areas, and, and I put the FX board into the GTV library, this is the EMFX, there, was this huge, there is this huge reach for yield, isn't there? And there has been this huge momentum in carry trades. Do you think that the EM equity space is going to bear more pressure relative to the developed market equity space in this beginnings of repricing? The short answer is yes, which is why in our second half of the uh, outlook piece, we have moderated our view on emerging market equities from overweight to neutral, and we have uh, uh, capped our U.S. equity market overweight and also upgraded uh, European equities from underweight to uh, neutral. So this incremental rebalancing of moving towards the value market and moving incrementally away from uh, emerging market uh, equity reflect uh, our uh, caution uh, against uh, uh, emerging market assets coming under pressure in light of trade tension ramping up.